by the way, her name is Sister Isela. Okay, I introduced you guys, Sister Isela. Here you go. Thank you. thank you, Deacon Doug, and thank you, Brother Walter. Well, hello, good evening. My name is Isela Cabrillo, and I am more than blessed to be here with you all tonight. But I want to start off with the Holy Word of God that is alive and effective. And as the second song that Brother was sharing, I or the first one, I excuse me, I want to see you, God. I want to see you, God. And I hope that that's our desire. All of us, that that's our desire. And special shout out to confirmation class. I'm so excited that you're here because God has a reason why you're here. So thank you. And I invite you all to open your hearts. And we're going to read and meditate the word of God made flesh when we allow his word to come alive in our hearts. So let us do this in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 7, 8, 7 and 8. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The word of God. We respond, thanks be to God. Yes. So I was just really impacted that if we desire to see the face of God, we need a special virtue, purity, la pureza. We need purity. We need chastity in our lives. So let us hold on to that thought. Now I'm going to go back a little bit and share Proverbs, Proverbs 5, verse 23, that tells us, excuse me, verse... Four, chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance, from, for from it will flow the spring of life. One more time. Keep your heart with all vigilance, from, for it will flow the springs of life. The word of the Lord. So what is God trying to tell us? One, that we need to have the virtue of purity. Two, we need to guard our hearts because if we don't guard our hearts, then we're not going to have it. We're not going to have life for from the heart flows springs of life. So if we're not taking care of our heart. We're exposing it. Now, before I continue, I want to share a little bit about you because most people are like, sister, have you always been like this? And I'm like, no, I have not. I have a past, you know, and I'm going to tell you really quickly. Uh, I was at 19, partying up, you know, doing stuff with my ex-boyfriend that I should not be doing, not living a chaste life. But the Lord in his mercy encountered, encountered me and invited me to this relationship, invited me to this purity. What did I do? I asked our blessed mother, Mother Mary, if this boyfriend is not going to lead me to holiness, if this person is not going to lead me to what your son wants me to do, let me know. Sure thing, two months later, what did I find out? He was watching pornography. Not for the first time, but for the second time. And I was with this person four years and four months. So it's very difficult. But it was a decision that God was presenting to me. And plus, he was partying up and drinking up. And my dad has always struggled with alcohol. Did I really want to continue that relationship? No. And our blessed mother, she interceded for me. That's why I love her so much. And she made it clear. You got to let him go. Was it hard? Yes. Four years plus. But I let him go and praise be the Lord that I'm not with that person. Not because he's not a good person, but just because I know that if I were to continue that relationship with somebody that's watching pornography, how could they value me if they don't value themselves? So this is a really important shout out. Guard your heart, not only your guard, your heart, but your eyes. Because your eyes are the windows to your soul. And you are more than that. You were created for more than that. So that's the first thing, right? I let him go. Fast forward 2015, I go to my first vocational retreat. Where for the first time I hear the word vocation. Where for the first time. I hear Jesus Christ inviting me not only to a relationship with him, but he's like, come follow me. Was it an, uh, a wow moment? Yes, it was. But the Lord was faithful. And even though I went back to my parents and I said, 
hey, I want to be a missionary. They're like, estás loca. <laughs> You're crazy. You are crazy. I had one more year to uh, finish school. So I decided, and because I had just finished this relationship, I decided I didn't want to rebound with Jesus, you know, <laughs> because some people do that. <laughs> they, they, how do I say it? They go do missionary work for maybe the wrong reasons or as an escape. So anyways, I didn't go. I, I finished school. Thanks be to God. I graduated from, in 2016 from Sacramento State. So I didn't go. But God was so good that he continued opening doors. Fast forward 2017, I'm ready to go be a missionary, right? And I was sharing last, actually last week with Sister Rosa and CDA Mundo Joven that I was this close to going. I had refu uh, refused a scholarship to continue my master's. I had refused a couple of works, work um, offerings. And I was this close to going, but I think I was in, under a lot of emotional stress that I, one of the things that the missionary servants of work of the word they ask for is health. You gotta be in a good health. So I went to check myself, and in that um, chequeo físico, that physical check, I I had a convulsion, and it was like what a convulsion. And they sent me to a neurologist and so forth, and they were asking me to take medicine, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that unless you tell me what's wrong with me. Final point, I didn't be, I didn't go to the mission work. I didn't go. But once again, God is so faithful that he provided. But you see this. When you're about to do something great and pleasing, there's always going to be obstacles in the way. But God is faithful. Because when he sets your eyes on you, whoever you are, he keeps those eyes. Because his gaze is of mercy and of compassion. And so moving forward, I didn't go. So remember, I had my calling in 2015. I was going to go, but I didn't. In, in 2017, I was going to go, and I didn't. Finally, in 2019, I'm like, I got to go now or never because I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> you know, and I was at that stage 27. So finally, I entered as a missionary uh, with the Misionero Servidores de la Palabra. But... Well, no, but, but before I go there, um, the misioneros, servidores de la palabra, the missionary servants of the word, they have five pillars. The first one, well, and it's not in a specific order, but a postulate. A postulate is what we do, how we serve, right? Uh, prayer life, every day, thanks be to God, a holy hour, holy mass, um, liturgy of the hours, a holy rosary. You're getting nourished so much because you're, you want to continuously be in that relationship with God because we can't be a missionary if we don't have a relationship with him, right? Then the third one is study. You constantly study the word of God because that's the charisma. That's how you're going to serve the people of God. And then you see work. Work sanctifies us. And I'm not only talking about uh, mental work, but we literally have to be out there with a shovel or sweeping or in the desert with the hot temperature and um, they, they, oh, hold, hold on, I'll go there to a minute. It's el desierto, it's the desert. But in God's mercy, there's trees, there's uh, life, they, hay cosecha. There's grapes and there's uh, apples and there's different things, you know. So at the time of harvest, we all have to go out there and give it your all. So I want to say that that work sanctifies us. And finally, the fifth pillar is community. Well, guess what? This community was the hardest for me. But why? Because there's a story before it. Before I finally entered to the missionary in, in 2019, a right, right away, I mean, justamente un mes antes, just a month before, I experienced one of my, probably my greatest fall. And what is this that? Remember I told you I broke up with this ex-boyfriend that was watching pornography because I knew that was not for me and I didn't desire that. And I, after him, I decided to live a chaste life. I had, by the mercy of God, sustained that promise. Five years of chastity. And in one night, se perdió. In one night, those five years were gone. 
and it's hurtful, but God doesn't allow us to stay just with the pain. He reconstructs us. He rebuilds us. And even and you would think, how is it that just a month before? Why? Because when you're about to do something that is pleasing to the eyes of God, what is the enemy going to do? Attack you, get to you. And unfortunately, I fell. I fell by my own mistake. I fell because I was not guarding my heart. I fell because I was not sustaining to the sacramental life. And that, brothers and sisters, when you know the love of Jesus Christ and you, it's one thing to fall him before knowing him. But when you encounter him and you fall, it's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. But even in the midst of my fall, of losing my chastity after five years, his love was ever faithful. And he still called me. He still took me in. And that's why I want to say that this Misionero Servidores de la Palabra was a refuge for me. And I want to share the word of God in Hosea, from the prophet of Hosea, chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, that tells us. 14 to 16. Therefore, I will now persuade her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. From there, I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Ophir a door of hope. There she shall respond as in the days of her youth, as at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. So you see, even though I was broken, even though I was destroyed by my own sin, God still called me in. God took me to the desert to conquer my heart, to restore me, to renew me, to love on me, even though I had felt him. And that's the mercy of God, that when we fall, we fail him. He doesn't look at your sin. He looks at you, at your worthiness, and he continues calling you. And think about it, Christ of the desert, Cristo del desierto. There's a lot of purification. The desert is a, a symbol of purification. Why? We had to do some sacrifices, waking up at 5.30 in the morning, taking cold showers, taking cold five-minute showers, eating the food that you were given, even if you wanted it or not, having to follow directions going from being independent to now you have to submit yourself and so many other sacrifices but I praise God because in that desert he purified me it was my moment of purification and he once again spoke to my heart he reconstructed me I want to share another uh, bible verse uh, but before I do I want to go back to the point of why was community so hard for me, right? Because sin destroys us. Sin disfigures us. And the sin that I had fallen into had completely destroyed the person that I had been constructed to do. Me tiró, me destruyó. And sin not only destroys your relationship with God, it destroys your relationship with yourself. And not only with yourself, but with community. Because if we're not in that state of grace, if we're not in that relationship with God, with yourself, how can you be with it with another person? It's incongruent. It doesn't make sense. But even though community life was so difficult for me, God's faithfulness, once again, I can't, Stop saying it. His faithfulness is ever present. He was there and he continues being there for every single one of us. But once, once again, consequence of sin is not only that everything you feel, but it breaks your relationship with God, yourself, and with others. Just think about it. When we're going through difficult times, why is it so hard for people to communicate? For people to get along, for people to um, establish a, a relationship, establish communication, because maybe there's something there that we need to work through. And remember, sin disfigures us. Nos ciega, 
that desire that I had to see the face of God, it just, it just ruins it. It just, ¿cómo se dice ciega? It just blinds you. Sin, hmm? if sin fucks your vista and it blinds you. As a consequence that I was having such a hard time with community, what happened, usually you're only asked to do eight months of formation, but they asked me to do 11 months. So three more months. That was like, what? It was a difficult thing to take in. But the Lord was humbling me. The Lord was saying, you need to work on this. You take it or you leave it. And let it make this clear. You're free to go. So if you don't want to do their rules, you can go. I could have done that. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not going to do that. But I wanted to learn in that painful process, what was the Lord teaching me? And the first thing he was teaching me was humbleness. I remember a talk that I was having with Ernan and Brother Danny that saying, have you been humble? I'm like, no, brother, I have not been humble. And I'm still working on that very beautiful virtue. But you see, when God allows us to go through those hard times, it's because he wants to teach us a lesson. He wants to give us something. Also, the mother of vices is soberbia. How do I? Pride. Pride is the mother of vices. And the vice that I have fallen to, sensuality or sexuality, is connected very clearly to pride. While pride is the mother of all vices, all vices you can think of, humility is the mother of all virtue. So what was the Lord trying to teach me? The virtue of humbleness. Once again, I needed to be humble. And even though it was a difficult thing to take it in, because by that time I was already a lector, I was already doing this, I was already doing that. So pre um, preparada, like prepared, I was already prepared. But spiritually, not close. So you see, the Lord allowed that. And I want to go and share now the other Bible verse, which is Ezekiel. I'm going to invite someone to help me. It's already here. You can come up front and you can just Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 24. I have it here already if you want to borrow it, sister. 17, verse 24. All the trees of the field should know that I am the Lord. I bring low the, the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, has spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Daniela. So we just hear the word of God telling us, I bring the high tree. I bring low the high tree. I make the high, I make high the low tree. I drive up the green tree and make the tree, the dry tree flourish. So once again, that it were maybe Having that pride, the Lord is going to humble us one way or another way. But for our own benefit, for our own sake. Now that all of that, that sin does in our hearts, it leaves you without life. It leaves you without hope. It leaves you without esperanza, without desires. But the Lord will make that tree flourish if you allow him to. If you allow him to conquer your heart, which is a title tonight, the first mission of Jesus is to conquer your heart. And the Lord knew that right before I entered, my heart had been devastated because I had not guarded it. And he wanted to enamor me again. He wanted to make me fall in love with him again, with his grace, with his mercy, with who he is, a loving Jesus, a merciful Jesus, a faithful Jesus at all times. Even though it was a beautiful but painful process, I would go back to that again and again. Because I cannot be a missionary 
and share the love of God with someone else if I have not allowed his love to conquer me. He wants to conquer my heart fully so then I may have the conviction, the fire to go out and conquer other souls in his holy and precious name. And we see it in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, verse 31 verse uh, excuse me chapter 31 verses 3 to 4 that tells us the lord appeared to him from far away i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore i have continued my faithfulness to you again i will build you and you shall be built O oh, virgin Israel, again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merry makers. The word of the Lord. Let us hear these words again, brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ tells us, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Even though I had led him to the side, even though I have felt him, even though I had ruin our relationship he tells me tonight and he tells you tonight again i have loved you with an everlasting love that's why i will renew you if we go forward i like the version in spanish honestly so this talk is a little hard because i prefer spanish porque en español dice te reconstruiré israel i will reconstruct you israel now take your own name I will reconstruct you, Daniela. I will reconstruct you, Lupita. I will reconstruct you, Pamela. And whatever we're dealing with, because we all have our battles. But tonight, Jesus Christ, just like, just like he did it in my life, in that desert where you would think that you have no life, he conquered my heart. He reconquered my heart. He was my refuge. He gave me life with his everlasting word, but also teaching me the lesson of humility. Because once again, he wants to conquer you. The first mission of Jesus Christ is to conquer your heart. To make you feel that love, that mercy, that everlasting faithfulness. And another image that I have, not only the desert that it's transformed, but also, um, well, yes, the desert. Think about it. Everybody close your eyes right now. Think of a desert. What is it? Hot temperature, dry up, you're hot, and, and more. But the Lord with his love comes with his grace, with his mercy. And that thing that you felt was dried up, your heart, your hopes, your desires, he breathes upon his breath of life. He not only reconquers your soul, but he gives you life. He makes hope come out of that situation that you thought was no hope. He makes those lessons be worth it. He teaches you his love. He flourishes. He wants to flourish in your soul. But the decision is yours. The decision is yours of if you want to allow Jesus Christ to enter into that little piece of your heart that needs reconstruction, that needs rebuilding, that needs reorder, that needs his grace. It is up to you, brothers and sisters. You guys can open your eyes now. And now I want to see you, I want you all to see this, the cross. Because in those moments when they told me, okay, you're not going to do eight months. Now you're going to do 11 months. Was it easy to take in? No. Once again, it was a humbly lesson. But I learned that my calling, my faith was not on the nun that was telling me that, was not on the father, was not on the community members, was not on anybody else, but on who? On Jesus Christ. And that's the same invitation that I want to give you all, that whatever situation we may be going through, because it's easy for us to judge the clergy, the nuns, the fathers, the community members, or we might be, be going through that of being judged. But hey, hold up. 
Don't put your eyes on me because I'm a sinner. Uh Uh-uh. Put your eyes on who? On Jesus Christ. On Jesus Christ, the one that shed the last drop of blood for love for you. For love for me. It is not the pastor or the deacon or the father or the nun or the sister or the brother that died for you. It is Jesus Christ. And we're going to have that very clear because we're humans. And it's easy to put our eyes on someone else. But no, contemplating the cross was what gave me the strength to continue that process. To understand that even though it didn't make sense for me to give him thanks and to stick through what he was going to do through my life. And thanks by his mercy, I did. I continued my formation and later on, 11 months later, or a total of eight months and then three more, so 11 months, I did my promise. My promise of serving the Lord under chastity, obedience, and obedience and poverty that think about it it is the three vows that religious life or excuse me religious orders they they do is it easy no because you're literally dying to yourself but in that dying to yourself you're giving life to others in that dying to yourself you're allowing jesus christ to work through you to take the message of salvation to other souls, to other people. So by his grace, only by his grace and mercy was was that I was able to stay true, to stay continue, to make my promise. And by his glory, I did one year and four months of missionary work. My first mission was in Riverside, then Tulare, California, uh, Rialto, California, and then Kansas City, Missouri the furthest away. But once again, he wants you to fix your eyes on him. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. And he tells us, just like he told me, he tells us tonight, Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10, from the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. The word of the Lord. Just like he told me those words, because his word is mighty and precious. He tells us tonight, whatever you may be going through, I will hold you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. But it is up to us if we allow him in. If we say, Lord, yes, I need you to strengthen me. Yes, I need you to hold me because physically, mentally, spiritually, me by myself, Isela, I can't do it. I need your grace. I need your strength. I need your victorious hand to uphold me, to sustain me. And another verse of Isaiah, he tells us, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. Isaiah verse chapter 54 verse 10 all of the bible scriptures get to my heart but this is a special one for the mountains may depart and the hills be removed but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed says the lord who has compassion on you the word of the Lord. We hear it clearly, brothers and sisters. Even though we may fall, even though we may turn our cheek and our face and our soul from God, he is ever faithful. And he tells us, even if the mountains go, be moved, my steadfast love for you shall not depart from you. Que fidelidad. What a faithfulness that God Jesus Christ has for every single one of us. I mean, I don't know if that makes you fall in love or not, but for me, it makes me go over heels. That even though I betray him, he is faithful. His love is ever present. Because why? Because he is faithful to his covenant of peace. 
to his alliance of peace because he has compassion on me. The Lord had a great compassion on me. And just like Jesus Christ had the compassion on me, he invites me to go out forth and have compassion on others. Be merciful. If you're merciful, then God will be merciful with you. Like the um, bienaventuranzas, how do I say that in English? Um, the Beatitude tells us, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, the merciful will receive mercy, if I'm translating it correctly. So if we want to go out forth, we first need to receive the mercy and compassion of God. I can't give what I don't got. And once again, Jesus Christ, the first mission of Jesus Christ is to conquer your... No los miro convencidos. <laughs> the first mission of Jesus Christ is to conquer your heart. So then when I allow myself, when I see my brokenness, my misery, my yuckiness, in other words... I allow, I'm like, here I am, Lord. Take me as I am. And I allow his mercy to overflow, to reconstruct me. When I allow that, then I'm being equipped to go out there and show the same mercy, show the same love, and follow the commandment that he tells us, the calling that he gives us. Let us go to, um, if you have your Bible, the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Verse 23, the sending. Chapter 20, verse 20 to 23. Mm -hmm. So John chapter 20, verses 20 to 23. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. To them, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. One more time. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven to them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. So look at the beauty of our Jesus Christ. His apostles had betrayed him, had abandoned him, had left him to the side. And what are the first words of Jesus Christ? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And just like I had left him to the side, I had betrayed him, I had left him, he tells me, peace be with you. And not only does he grant me his peace and his mercy, but he sends me. He sends me to be a missionary. He sends me and he tells me, as the Father has sent me, so I sent you. But once again, if I'm not capable of receiving his mercy, how can I go out and show it to others? I can't. So the first mission of Jesus Christ is to conquer your soul. So then you may have that conviction to go out there and conquer other souls in his name. Other souls that are broken. Other souls who have walked away from the church because maybe they saw a, a bad testimony. Other souls who have fallen deep and instead of going to reconciliation or seeking him, decided to abandon the way. Just think about it. And we don't have to go out far. Think about your own family or about those around you. And remember that all of us have that calling to be a missionary, whether it be in China, in Thailand, or in our backyard. We're all called 
to be a missionary, a missionary of love, of grace, of mercy. But once again, I know I can sound repetitive, but the decision is ours. And this beautiful message of reconciliation that God is inviting to us all. I invite you now to go to the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter, uh, the second letter, chapter 5, verse 19, and then verses 11 to 12. So verse 5. Excuse me. Chapter 5, verse 19. We'll start off there first. From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 19. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. One more time. That is, in Christ God, who was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. The word of the Lord. So just like Jesus Christ entrusted that message of reconciliation to me in my brokenness, not counting my trespasses, he is entrusting that message to you as well. That message of reconciliation, that message of taking his peace, his mercy to so many souls who have maybe forgotten, who have maybe abandoned, who have walked away. In this message, are we worthy of it? No. Because he's not taking in consideration our trespasses, but he's trusting you. He's entrusting you with this treasure to let others know of his mercy, to let the good news be known. But now let us question ourselves. Are we doing that or are we falling into comfort? That, well, I already do this and I already do that. No, we should always constantly be seeking to do more and to share the word of God. No, it's not you. It's the word of God that transforms. For example, here, so we're LA. We have a beautiful mission of every encounter night, every Thursday, because we want souls to have that encounter. We want to continue growing in community. But everyone should question themselves. How am I putting forth the message of reconciliation? Or have I allowed myself to be reconciled with God? Have I allowed myself to allow his mercy to enter and to fulfill me? Am I living my sacramental life? Because it's easy. It's easy just for us to continue forth and going forth. But when was the last time you went for confession? When was the last time you went for spiritual direction? When was the last time that you went to adore our Lord in the blessed sacrament? If we're not nourishing our relationship with God, we can't expect it to flourish. We need to take that time. We need to make that commitment. And I want to conclude with um, fast forward. I finished my missionary life one year, four months, and I decided it was time to, to move forward or to continue the mission in a different way. I, I, I said thanks and because it, it's you're doing an experience, you know. They either invite you to continue forth and discern religious life or to go back into the world living as you as you learned, you know, ch uh, chase life, poverty and obedience. But of course, it changes up a little bit, you know. Anyways, I came back home. I was happy to be back with my family. And a lot of you know the story. I was looking for a job. I have my BA. I could be a teacher, so forth. No había trabajo. Like it just didn't happen. The Lord had me wait a month and a half, which is not much, you know, but without employment, without money, thanks to God, I was living with my family, but I didn't have that um, income coming in, coming in, right? And I remember one time I went to the church and I was like, Lord, I just surrender myself, you know, you have always um, provided in your divine providence. Here I am. A couple of weeks later, I was able to, to be hired at ESNE. And one of my desires when I left the missionary, when, it, when, I, when I moved on from missionary life, it was like, 
God, I want to continue sharing your word. Put me in a place where I can share your word freely, where I don't have to worry if they're watching me or like concerns that I could just do it outspokenly and share your holy name, your beautifulness, your mercy. Sure thing, later on, God provided, and I'm working at Esne by his mercy and his grace. And I mean, thanks to Esne, I'm here too, you know? So we just see how God provides everything um, in his perfect timing because he knows the desires of your heart. He knows what is pleasing to him. He knows the plans that ha he has for you. Even though in that moment, it might seem shaky, it might not seem clear, but he knows what he's doing. And I want to conclude that it's our calling, all of our calling to evangelize. Sometimes we just think it's the priest, it's the nun, it's the sisters. No, it's your calling. It's my calling to evangelize. And uh, why did I share my uh, testimony today? Because this upcoming um, Sunday is the World Youth, the World Youth Day. It's the, <laughs> it's the Sunday, uh, the, ¿cómo se uh, say in Spanish? Es el Domingo Mundial de las Misiones. It's the World Missions Day, Sunday. Thank you, sister. So in that day, we're thinking of all the missionaries that have left everything for the sake, for the love of God. But let us also think about their struggles. Being a missionary is not being like, a, woo, no, you get tired. You're still human. You're still going through your own struggles. But those are those persons that have allowed, just abandoned themselves completely in the hands of God for it to be God to take the good news. God need, God wants to invite you to his part to his plan of salvation. He needs your feet. He needs your hands. He needs your eyes. He needs your words to share with others his mercy and his great love. And the, um, el tema of, of this mission, 20, of Domenun, Domenun, if I'm saying it correctly, D-O-M-U-N-D, -D, Domenun 2022 is based on Acts, I invite you all to go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 18. Chapter 1, verse 18. Acts, from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse, I think I said 18, but I meant 8. <laughs> 8. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. One more time. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. If we allow the Holy Spirit to just fulfill us, the Holy Spirit, which is the spouse of our blessed mother, to just take us up on, we will receive the power from on high. The power from on high to go and share the good news to go out and forth and be witnesses to the to the to the mercy to the love and the compassion of God but once again i can't go out there and witness to the love of Christ if i first don't accept the love of Christ in my heart if i want to be a missionary i need to allow the grace of God to conquer our hearts to conquer your heart to conquer my heart. And I thought it was done, but there's one more verse. The second letter of the Corinthians. We're going to go back to them. Second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 11. The second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, 
verses 11 to 12. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Just like St. Paul is speaking to the community of Corinthians, tonight the Lord has blessed me to share with you all my testimony and to just share his goodness, his faithfulness, his mercifulness, his everlasting faithfulness. And just like St. Paul asked the community of Corinthians, I also invite you, open wide your hearts to Jesus Christ. And let his mission be to conquer your heart so you may go with the fire of the Holy Spirit and conquer other hearts for their sake, for their salvation, for their eternal life in heaven. Amen. one